back the investment money. So your money can come back to you. But still it works because it's a self-sustaining company. You, you return the investment money, still it's a continuous. It's a, that's the beauty of the social business. It can stand on its own, it can expand on its own, and that's how it uh, keep on growing. And your idea of social business is different from what we usually think of as a business might uh, making the profit, which you already explained. Can you explain that more? How, what do you mean? Uh, yeah, just to clarify, you say, uh, business is for making profit. I would just add a little word on there. Business that we know is making pro personal profit. Social business also makes profit. So making profit is the same in both cases. In one case, you are making personal profit. You take back the profit for yourself. In other case, profit doesn't, you don't take the profit. It stays with the profit, with the company. It's re rolled into the business because it's a non-dividend company. I don't take any dividend. It's a profit there. It's, if I wished, I could take it, but I decided not to take it. It goes to the, to solve the problem. Solve the problem. This whole dedication is solving the problem. Suppose you are designing a business to make money. So your entire attention, how to make more money. Even in the process of making more money, you're creating problem for others, you don't mind because your focus is on making money. So you don't pay attention to what happens to the other people. In social business, your entire focus is solving problem, not making money for yourself. So you can dedicate all your creative power how to solve people's problem in a business way, so in a sustainable way. So suddenly you see you have lots of capacity, lots of talent in coming up with those ideas. Basically, social business is a creative idea. How to bring out your creative idea to solve the problem. You have the problem of poverty, you have the problem of healthcare, you have the problem of education, and all those list of all the problems. You think for a while, can I create a business to solve the problem of education? You come up with 101 ideas, how to make it, how to make it cheap, how to make it efficient, how to make sure it reaches out to the people where no education will ever reach. You can come up with that solution because you put your attention to that. If you say, oh, government will take care of it, government will set up schools, whether everybody comes, everybody doesn't come, if they will say, well, we'll try. It never gets solved. You'll always have problems with that. But you're addressing a very specific problem, not only education, education for the poor, education for the remote destination poor. It's not just poor as a whole, but the people who are in the remote places. I'm designing a business, for those people, so that they can get education, at the same time money comes back, rolls back. How do you do that? How do the poor people pay back? This is a surprise. How many, how, were you expecting poor people to pay, pay? Well, that was the same old question when we did the Grameen Bank, Macro the same question. Can poor people pay back? They're hungry people. They will take the money and eat it up. That's completely wrong idea. Because today, for 40 years, it's happening. People pay back, pay back interest and everything. And bank makes profit, profit goes back to them because we are a social business. We don't want to make money for ourselves. So that's the whole idea of social business. So there are business to make money. There's a business to solve problems. And so that's called social business. Excellent. How the social business is different from social responsibility? Social responsibility, particularly the word which is familiar or popular, corporate social responsibility, CSR, corporate social responsibility. That's for the business to make money. I run a business, say, I run a business to make money, I make money. At the end of the year, I calculate how much profit I make. Then I say, okay, 1% of my profit, I'll give away. As like, a like a charity. It's a charity. It, not like, it is a charity. charity. It's not like charity, it's a charity. I write a check for an NGO, go and help the poor people. I don't do it myself, I just write a check. And I say, oh, I, I didn't have any time to pay attention to the poor people during the whole year, and I may have done something wrong to them. Now that I made profit, I give a, a bulk of money, 1%, 1.5%, one or whatever I wish. It is my decision, nobody is forcing me. In some countries, there's a law. Like in India, there's a law that 2% of the profit has to be given as a CSR, so there's a fixed amount. But in most countries, they don't have a law, so the company decides what amount they want to give. Usually, it's 1%, under 1%. 1% 1 
to write a check to an NGO to do that. So that's called social responsibility, corporate social responsibility. But again, charity, number one, and it's done by somebody else. What I'm talking about social business, you do it yourself. For example, that money that you are giving as CSR money, instead of giving it to, away to somebody else, why don't you invest in creating a new business called social business to solve the problem of whatever thing you thought, a old age problem or a child mortality problem or maternal mortality problem or whatever. Create a business to solve that problem in a social business way because you already give that money. You don't want to make money out of it. You already decided it. So that money will be a good source for creating business and it will continue and it bears your name. So you'll be always saying that it, it works well, it becomes more efficient, so that you feel good that you have done something which stands and continues. If you write a check, you forget what happened to that money. But if you create a company, social business company, you always remember because you are personally involved in that. It's sustainable and it's Absolutely. Can we say that this is a, a process of eliminating the poverty? Poverty is one issue, is it? Social business is good for any problem. Poverty problem, healthcare problem, education problem, environment problem, old age problem, suicide problem, whatever you say. It's all your business. You come up with an idea how to solve the problem. We have a long list of problems. One of the problems is poverty. So if you want to use the social business idea to address poverty, of course you can do that. But if you want to use the social business idea for something else, the healthcare or something, you can do that. Within healthcare is a long list. Healthcare itself is a long list. So if you talk about healthcare, I just mentioned the maternal death, child mortality, problem of uh, child malnutrition, problem of uh, hyg hygienic conditionality of the people, sanitation, many things. So you apply your social business idea to address each one of them or whatever your capacity allows. You don't have to solve everything. You can focus on one thing and do it good. Once you design something as a social business, it has its own life. You created an organism. Now it can expand by itself. It, because it is a sustainable thing. It's not something that, oh, you're always, it's a sick thing, you're always putting money to keep it alive. It's not like that. You create a social business as a healthy business, and it continues to grow, it expands, it takes care of more and more pro of the same problem. How does it differ from NGOs? NGO, by definition, it's, a, it's a basically a charity organization. It's a, that's how the law is created, charity organization. So you take donor money, that's a traditionally done. Donor money is received by NGO, and they use the money to help people in a charity way, give education, health care, uh, other services that you need, whatever services you need. So this is one way. Some NGOs can do something to recover some money. I give you health care, but not completely free. I charge you a little bit. So you may charge 10% of the cost, 90% is subsidy. So NGO is basically, it's not uh, designed as a business. But when we talk about social business, it's a business. There is no room for charity here. You have to be sustainable. You have to stand on your own feet. You have to return the money that somebody invested in you. These are the conditions of a social mm -hmm. business. So how does it uh, differ from uh, um, social enterprise? Social enterprise is a very wide word. Is it a part of social enterprise? Uh, it could be. It's a, social business is a part of social enterprise too, but a small part of it. Social enterprise is very large. Anything you do can be part of social enterprise. And social enterprise, you can make money. But you say, I'm doing it uh, for benefit of the people, but I make money out of it. So you can make little money, you can more money, but still you can say, I'm doing social business. You can have a um, IT company, you say, oh, I'm serving the people. People need that, but I make a lot of money. So you can call it a social enterprise. You can run a school and make a lot of money. And say, I'm providing education, so I'm providing a social enterprise. I'm a social enterprise. So social enterprise is very flexible. You don't know what exactly is a social business, a uh, social enterprise. But social business is very precise. First of all, you don't want to make a penny out of it. That's very precise. And you must solve a problem. 
that's your 100% attention in that. So it's very precise. But since it solves people's problem as a business, so it comes under the social enterprise. Excellent, excellent. So go back to a little uh, few, um, just, uh, uh, there are many co controversies on the rule of current business practices in the society where people think capital is accumulating in the hands of few and in, in response, Many protests like occupying movement in different parts of the world demanding changed business practices. Do you think this is a turning point to think differently about the role of business in the society? We have no option because we have keep, keep creating poverty, creating problems everywhere. Through creating, continuing the business day, it, is, it was money-centric businesses, greed-centric businesses. All I want is make lots of money for myself. One, you have mentioned yourself that it is a concentration of wealth. It's always business helps you to concentrate. And that concentration is becoming faster and faster. And I mentioned that 1% of the world's population own 99% of the world wealth this year. Next year, will it be 1.5%? No, it will be mostly less than 1%, owning more than 99% of the world. So, and someday, if you continue this process, someday there will be only one person who will be owning the whole world's wealth because the process is moving in that direction. So there is no escape for that. You have to stop that process. So when you want to stop that process, you look at the business practices, how you do that. So you're trying to amend, you're trying to change. You say little things, we are socially oriented business, we social conscious business, many, many things you're saying. But basic structure still remains the same. You use those words. So many such movements are taking place. Some business people are very concerned about what they do. They created a group called B, uh, B Team. And B Team, what they do, they put uh, uh, behind their uh, businesses uh, three Ps. These are top business people. These are not small business people. These are global business people. They got together, said we will work for not only one P, which is profit. We'll be working for three Ps. Profit is one, one P. Second P is people. And third P is the planet. So it'll be the profit, people, and planet with equal importance. So we, every year we'll be producing our own records, what we have done for making profit for our shareholders, what we have done for the people, not just a tiny thing, one third of our attention will be on that, how to do that, and on the planet. Are we damaging the planet by doing our business or we are improving the planet by doing our business? So in the beginning, in our planning process, we'll have all these three. So this is one way to make it responsible businesses, socially conscious business, and so on. But still, profit will be part of it. Uh, so many such attempts are coming to make it happen, to make sure that uh, people get, uh, the businesses can move from simply profit, nothing else. I think that has to go, this nothing but profit. We make profit, personal profit, and we couldn't care less for anything else. And the faster we can stop that, better it is for us. Then you have to add other things, people and the planets and so on. And then best is to move into the social business, where the, hundred, pro, the personal profit disappears, only two per, P left. One P is gone, profit, personal profit is gone. Only two P is left is the planet and the people. So we do the business only for people and the planet, that's all. What do you say to people who say that business needs the profit incentive. Uh, if you want to do the business to make money, of course you need the profit incentive, because that's what the, all the business is. But if you don't want to make money, profit is not an incentive, because I decided I don't want to make money. Then you say, why should you do the other thing? Are you crazy? Is there an incentive in social business? The way I try to answer that question, I say, making money is happiness. The more money you make, the more happy you get. So it's an incentive. So making money is a happiness. Making other people happy is a super happiness. So it's all about happiness, which, one, which makes you happy. Money makes you happy. Making other people make happy is a happiness. So which one you want? Happiness or super happiness? To me, social business is super happiness. 
you make the world happy. You make people happy. And that makes you happy. So the world is about me and my happiness. What do I see as my happiness? So it's, if you say profit is the only happiness, I totally disagree with you. There are so many other things that will make you happy. And you pursue that. The economic theory that we built, unfortunately, forgot about other incentives. They have only one incentive in their discussion, making money. I said, that's where it went wrong. And we created the wrong world around us. All the concentration of wealth, everything is coming from that idea. If you widen it, there are other incentives, then of course you'll do business with other incentives too. And I'm adding that social business as a thing. Do you create a better world for, for the rest of your life? You create a better world for your, your next generation and generation next. They will be very grateful that you did that. And that makes me happy because I have done something for my posterity that uh, makes them happy. What, uh, what factors will motivate them and why? Uh, one, I just mentioned that making money is happiness. Making other people happy is super happiness. So if you think that's a super happiness, not because I said it. If you do it and you feel happy about it. Uh, if you have solved the problem of uh, maternal death, for example, you make happy that I have saved some life by doing social business. So that makes you happy and you want to do more. Suppose you took five unemployed young people out of unemployment by creating a social business. Those young people are not unemployed anymore. They are happy. They got a job. They can do something. If that makes you happy, you didn't want to do this to make money for yourself. All you wanted to see five unemployed young people get out of unemployment and have a decent life for themselves. And they got it. And it runs by itself. And you got your money back. And still it runs. That makes you very happy. So if you, if you taste it, will you stop here? No. 